then uh, we can take it from there. Each of the speakers, uh, you have uh, a large number of experts on, uh, on on this, and they can take up this. And uh, at the end of the I think session, there can be some questions and answers if that is the sort of uh, structure that we have, sorry, of uh, the session. Uh, I'll just give you a, a small uh, presentation. is an uh, autonomous organization of the Department of Science and Technology. Uh, it was established. It was established in uh, 2013, and uh, there were two uh, missions of the uh, Department of Science and Technology that were merged into this. The first was the National Mission of Bamboo Applications, and the second was Mission of Geospatial Applications. And uh, Now, uh, I'll just give you a brief on what we've done so far, uh, so that you get an idea of what, what sort of technology we work with. Uh, we are the front runners in communication technology today. We have uh, developed in PPP mode the software-defined radios, uh, which today are rated as one of the best in the world. And uh, these are 99% digital radios, which is a fourth generation radio set. And we've just completed a police network for the Arunachal Desh, uh, Arunachal Desh police uh, from Zenitham on the Chinese border to Vijayanagar on the uh, Burmese border. So without repeaters, it's a seamless network where you have voice, data, and uh, photographs, everything transmitted across the network. The second network we are doing in the northeast is for the Meghalaya police. And uh, the, similar, uh, the objectives are similar. And uh, this we should complete sometime uh, early next month. Uh, we've uh, also developed a large number of surveillance systems, which we've given to the central forces, the CRPF, BSF. We've done wireless CCTV network for Shillong and Tura. Tura is a town uh, in Meghalaya. And uh, of course, it's also in the midst of a lot of uh, problematic areas where you have a lot of insurgency. Uh, we have we simili similarly done a network for uh, the Assam police in Guwahati, only a partial network. And uh, we did try the use of this technology for telemedicine and teleeducation in Nagaland and Tura. So these are some of the things we've done in the communication sector. Uh, uh, as a, um, as a um, uh, geospatial mission, we were in developing and using a lot of satellite technology or 3D models, which we uh, used extensively for the uh, uh, axial areas. We've given it to a number of forces. We've given a number of uh, these models to the Assam police, to the Meghalaya police. So this is some of, these are some of the, just a snapshot, is, though this is one on the, the side is on the, is on Calcutta, for the Calcutta police, this is on the urban terror. So we've been working across on some of these other things. The more interesting development now is what we do is with the unmanned aerial vehicles. We have, uh, we design our own unmanned aerial vehicles, we fly our own unmanned aerial vehicles and we have uh, specific objectives in achieving this. We've just uh, finished uh, flying the first watershed in uh, Meghalaya, which is the Ganol River. It's, uh, and we're now going to image 2,000 square feet of watershed. Now, if you want water planning at any point of time, you need very fine resolution uh, digital elevation models. So, uh, what we get is a resolution of 5 centimeter and a vertical accuracy of 12 centimeter which uh, no satellite imagery can give you. So we are actually crossing a big hump in terms of what is possible in terms of data capability. Uh, this is the uh, second work that we have now coming on after the monsoon, which is uh, uh, photographing 4,500 kilometers of the Brahmaputra um, embankments and, it, and its tributaries. So again, we work at 5 centimeter resolution and 22 centimeter resolution so that their basic idea is to see whether these embankments are uh, in uh, are available uh, in March uh, to stop the floods. Of course, your uh, flood the flood problem is uh, almost every year in Assam, so you really can't 
um, uh, gave you much of it, but of course, the government is trying to build as many embankments and show that they, they work effectively. So this is one of our jobs which we are, which we are doing for the uh, government of Assam. Now this is uh, another small uh, um, example that we show. Uh, we've done work with the Columbia University. They had a project in Ranchi for water distribution, and they were using abandoned mines. So um, we flew our UAVs and. Uh, we worked out uh, with at 5 centimeter resolution, vertical accuracy 14 centimeter, to build a, a water pipeline for water distribution to the villages. So uh, these are some of the examples how we use UAVs, and I think why I quote these examples is that this can be effectively used for agriculture and also for estimation of uh, estimation of the crop. Now, uh, in that sense, I refer. Uh, here to uh, Dr. Dawes' uh, presentation yesterday, where he specifically mentioned that in a in a climatic model uh, or in a in, in an insurance model, the uh, slopes are very important. The digital surface model is very different to ensure how the water runoff is. And we've been working together. Both of us have been working together in Bihar on some of these issues. So um, this is. This is some mapping we've done for the tsunami, tsunami vulnerable area on the coastal side, again, same resolution. Now, uh, for uh, crop productivity estimation and damage assessment, we used uh, multi-spectral satellite imagery, high resolution UAV data, and field data. Uh, you know, uh, we had a program around 2007 8 uh, when we were a mission, uh, and we did a complete estimation of productivity and production in Haryana. I think it was 7, 8, and 8, 9, then the program broke down. And it was very accurate in terms of what the total production was, and we went from village to village in um, uh, assessing the accuracy of our assessment. But this program, we have now restarted, and we have a complete team which is also here to participate in the conference. And uh, so this is some of the work that we have recently started uh, in view of the problem uh, that the farmers have been facing. And also the problem of assessment, which governments have been uh, uh, have not been able to solve effectively, giving a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, a pain to the farmers. So this is what we uh, we just recently started. Uh, now this is what we have. We, what we did was we took up a sample village to uh, test out our uh, theories, and this is a village. Uh, Heavy Mandi in Patodi area, which is neighboring Delhi. Uh, one of our colleagues uh, uh, belongs to the village, so in that sense, we, we were able to verify the data uh, very quickly uh, and get, get the results. Here we have the UAV, where you have the mustard sample polygon and the wheat sample polygon. This we inlaid on a, on a, uh, on a, the uh, uh, imagery, the satellite imagery for classification. And uh, this is what we have got. And what we did was we did a ground verification using high, uh, high resolution geo reference data along with ground truthing. So, in order to ensure that our uh, crop classification was accurate. The other thing we did was recently, when there was a lot of rain and there was a lot of problem in assessing damage, we again flew the UAVs and worked out sample plots where there was a uh, where, where the wheat had rotted. We put this. In, uh, on the satellite imagery, and uh, we got a complete uh, assessment across many villages. Uh, of course, they were in the same uh, satellite tile. And uh, this, again, given that we have a, uh, a one of our colleagues coming from this area, we georeferenced the data and did the ground truthing, which was accurate. So, this is what we did uh, in terms of classification, accuracy, and uh, damage identification. Uh, damage assessment of the wheat crop due to rain in the month of March 2015 was done using UAV images as I have shown. We did the classification and then we used uh, the NDV and LAI for this village to get what the wheat uh, production would be which is 42.59 quintals per hectare. A similar exercise on the NDVI of the earlier period was done before the rain came in and the um, uh, production that we got, productivity that we got was 54, around 54 quintals per hectare, which uh, ordinarily matches the average productivity of the village. Loss assessment, about 11 quintals, 12 quintals, was what uh, we came up with and had, um, uh, again, a ground truthing done uh, by our colleague in the village. This is what we did uh, with the uh, CIPT Center of the Columbia University. They're working in Punjab. 
and uh, we got sample data from them and uh, for Amritsar Paddy we did an uh, assessment. Uh, you have the sample data average uh, uh, for each of the villages and we have the estimated productivity and uh, we got the GPS collisions for classification from, uh, from the Columbia University team in Punjab. A uh, similar exercise we did for wheat this time uh, in Ludhiana to check whether this works across uh, states, across uh, agro-climatic uh, zones. And so this is the assessment for uh, Ludhiana that we've done. And uh, again, um, uh, we spoke to the team and they said normally the uh, productivity should be close to 54, 55 uh, quintals per hectare. Again, the data source Landsat, GPS, Polygon data and uh, the Columbia University Center in Punjab. Now, what we have been also working with uh, 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 Mr. Daw in, uh, in uh, uh, Bihar and uh, with the Columbia Center in Punjab is the development of soil moisture sensor. Uh, ordinarily, soil moisture sensors are very expensive. Um, they are imported. They will start around uh, 15,000, 16,000 rupees. Uh, what we did was, uh, given our uh, strength in uh, video technology, uh, we built these soil moisture sensors um, and uh, uh, they've been tested in Bihar, they've been tested in Punjab. But uh, my point here of bringing this up was that is now uh, to set up a, 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 a rain gauge system or automatic weather station system is very expensive. Uh, yesterday you had a figure of 80,000 uh, per rain gauge system and uh, weather stations can uh, start anywhere around that price up to 4 lakhs depending on what you are buying and uh, what, what are the sort of sorry, data sets that you want. But uh, uh, what we are trying to do is, if you measure the soil moisture directly, ultimately crop is dependent on soil moisture. Whether you're taking the humidity, whether you're taking the rain, it's the soil moisture that matters, ultimately for the crop. So what we built are the soil moisture sensors, and uh, uh, these are, again, uh, given to the farmer to use himself. It's an electronic sensor, and uh, you get a reading. I'll just give a photograph of that. But uh, I uh, bounced this off uh, of one of our colleagues. So his point was, suppose the farmers cheat and they put it in some other spot to get a, get claims for their uh, for, for, for a drought or for whatever reason. I said, well, we can put a GPS. Third, we can put a uh, modem. So, you know, it's just a question of costs. But uh, again, it doesn't uh, work very much. I mean, doesn't uh, become very expensive. Between anything between 2,500 to 4,000 root is what we estimate to uh, make these in a, in a fairly large number. Depending on the numbers, because we also working, uh, these are not uh, so far producing very large quantities. We've just done about 500 so far and are testing them across uh, uh, various uh, parts of the country. This is a soil moisture test that you have. It also has a temp temperature sensor giving you the air temperature. So you can get a fair amount of data to assess what is the state of the crop. And now this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to also assess the, these soil moisture sensors against satellite data to see how good they are in terms of, uh, how good the satellite data is in terms of assessment. So we just had one pass of the Landsat and we tested our soil moisture sensors. Probably next week we'll get the results. So this is, uh, this is what we are doing. Now, how can these technologies help in developing insurance products is the big question. Now, uh, with the combination of UAVs, where you can get a very fine digital elevation model, satellite data, soil moisture sensors, surface model is possible to assess baseline production, as I've uh, shown you. I'm sure the other my colleagues here will also uh, show that this is a possibility uh, and technology is now available. And uh, now the main thing is whether the farmers will be willing to, uh, will be, uh, willing to uh, accept this. The idea is to assess uh, productivity at the village level. Of course, we can go right up to the farm level, but I think that will be too ambitious. The computing capacity involved will be very large. So the first step is go down to the village level as a uh, unit for production and then assess loss based on that unit. And uh, this can be then used, uh, visualized across the village, the district, 
whatever you may have it. Currently, there's a lack of fine data of the surface models and does not give a clear picture on the impact of rainfall. The best surface model you have is of the Survey of India, which is 10 meters plus minus in accurate. So, for water uses, it's, a, it's an absolutely worthless uh, piece of uh, elevation model. You need very fine models, as I've shown you, and we've done work across India on that. And I think that that may also be uh, one way for drought proofing if we were to, uh, you know, work on very fine models to uh, uh, to conserve water. Uh, I'm, as the Honorable Minister yesterday pointed out, and the Chief Minister pointed out, you've done a lot of work on irrigation. Well, this can uh, assist you in case there are issues of expansion. Otherwise, I think the MP government has done fantastic work, as I could make out. And uh, the currently rainfall is a, a parameter used for insurance. We could use soil moisture, and uh, if it goes beyond a point, you have issues where, where there was no uh, crop sowing because of low soil moisture, you can actually then assess that. So this is the net net of what we do, uh, and how we can put this together uh, uh, to build uh, probably a good uh, insurance product which is acceptable to the farmer. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies.